The cloud is a prison. And that's where local first software comes in. Keep the benefits of cloud computing, such as accessibility and collaboration, but remove the reliance on centralized servers. The cloud is a prison. Can the local first software movement set us free? Local first software which prioritizes the user's personal computer over cloud-based servers, is offering more control and improved user experience in software development. Introducing a phrase that became popular on the discussion forum Hacker News a few years ago, local first software. This phrase caught the attention of engineers because it seemed to propel links to the top of the page and offered a solution to a common problem in software development. The authors of a white paper called Local First Software proposed a new way of building software that prioritizes the user's personal computer over cloud-based servers. That's right, the authors of the white paper, including computer scientist Martin Kleppman, were alumni of successful tech startups who had become disillusioned with certain aspects of their industry. They saw that while there were more software developers than ever before, the software being created wasn't necessarily improving the user experience. Instead, it was focused on coding for the cloud and relying on large corporations to maintain the master copy of data. And that's where local first software comes in. The idea is to keep the benefits of cloud computing, such as accessibility and collaboration, but remove the reliance on centralized servers. Instead, each user would have a copy of the data stored locally on their device's hard drive. Changes made by different users would be reconciled whenever they connect, whether it's once a minute or once a week. Exactly. And building products like this requires fundamentally different ways of structuring data. It requires different math, but the result is less shitty software by freeing developers from worrying about backends, servers, and expensive cloud computing fees. They can focus on creating more interesting apps and take advantage of hardware improvements that cloud developers often miss out on. Right. When an app is cloud-based, its performance is limited by the speed of its connection to the central server. But with a local first app, the user's device runs all the code. So the better your device, the more the app can do. This is a major advantage that developers have been missing out on. Definitely. Platform capitalism can often squander useful technology. Platforms starve off good to their users, but as they grow and seek more profits, they begin to interfere with the features that users value. This is where the concept of enshittification comes in. However, the authors of the white paper believe that by changing the innards of software and prioritizing local-first approaches, technology can be nudged out of this cycle of decline. Right. Designing data-intensive applications. He introduces something called a conflict-free replicated data type, CRDT, which allows many people to collaborate on a file and automatically resolve conflicts in sensible ways. Yes, and CRDTs were actually co-developed by a French computer theorist named Marc Shapiro about two decades ago. At that time, Shapiro was starting to fear where cloud computing might lead the web. While the internet protocol itself remained open and decentralized, the stuff being built on top of it was becoming more monopolistic. Shapiro wondered if people had to be online to collaborate online, or if they could work offline and collaborate peer-to-peer. -peer. That's a fascinating question, and the solution they came up with was to create multiple replicas of the same file, each automatically sensing to an identical state as its peers. This way, collaborators can edit their replicas offline and the algorithm would ensure that changes are reconciled properly when they connect again. Exactly. And different CRDTs have different ways of preserving order and resolving conflicts. Some rely on timestamps, while others have ways of encoding the relationship of each element to the elements around it. These algorithms are still relatively new, but they offer a promising way to build local-first software that is stable and reliable. And it's interesting to note that while Google Docs became popular and relied on operational transformation and a central server, Shapiro believed that CRDTs provided a more theoretically sound foundation for truly peer-to-peer -peer software. Unfortunately, by the time Martin Kleppman came across Shapiro's paper, few people were using the software. Yes, it's a shame that CRDTs haven't gained more traction. But the Local First Manifesto is still an important concept to consider in software development. By prioritizing the user's device and building software that can work offline and collaboratively, we can potentially create better, more efficient applications. Absolutely. And as technology continues to advance and devices become more powerful, it's important for developers to explore different approaches and consider the benefits of Local First software. Martin Kleppman, who has a diverse background in both music and technology, co-founded a startup called Reportive that was later acquired by LinkedIn. 
but instead of sticking to the typical startup path, he took a research position at Cambridge, which allowed him to explore more creative approaches to programming. Right. And Kleppmann was particularly interested in data structures and how they can enable different types of applications. He saw an opportunity in a paper by Shapiro on conflict-free replicated data types, CRDTs, which he describes as an awakening. CRDTs provided the technical basis for a new class of software that no one was providing at the time. Exactly. But the problem was that the existing CRDT algorithms were inefficient and lacked the tools that developers actually use to make apps. So Kleppmann took it upon himself to code an open source implementation of CRDTs called Automerge, which would make it easier for developers to build apps using this technology. And here's an example of how Automerge works with an app called Pushpin, which is envisioned as a digital corkboard. Kleppmann and Peter Van Hardenberg, another developer, demonstrated its functionality by adding images and text boxes to their respective files and allowing them to merge. They admit that it's not perfect yet, with some changes not loading seamlessly, but it shows the potential for local-first applications. Absolutely. Van Hardenberg believes that local-first versions of popular apps like Slack, Google Docs, and even Photoshop could be possible with CRDTs. The idea is to have better design apps, calendars, budgets, and even more complex programs that prioritize privacy and end-to-end -end encryption. With no server intermediaries, users would have more control over their own data. And it seems like the concept of local first is gaining traction. CRDTs are being used by developers at the Washington Post to build a tool for arranging articles on the homepage. Even Apple's Notes app and Jupyter Notebooks, a popular data science app, have incorporated CRDTs into their collaboration tools. That's right. And Local First is not just limited to software development. It aligns with the principles of Web3, which focuses on decentralized apps using blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. However, Local First takes a different approach emphasizing user ownership and decentralization without the speculative financial incentives of cryptocurrency. Definitely. Ben Hardenberg believes that Local First has the potential to generate the same kind of excitement as crypto, but with software that actually delivers on its promises. He even mentions the need for a big exit that brings visible wealth to Local First developers and attracts more talent and resources to the movement. Principles of decentralization and Local First can be challenging to implement. It's much easier to rely on big tech platforms like Apple or Google to handle our data for us. However, Shapiro, one of the pioneers of CRDTs, believes that there's magic in the term local first and sees it as a potential revolution in the making. Right. Kleppmann envisions local first as a tool to carve out something better rather than completely eliminating cloud servers or going back to analog methods. He acknowledges that there's still work to be done in sharpening the tools and making local first more accessible for everyone. And speaking of accessibility, it's interesting to note that Kleppmann and Van Hardenberg have been cautious about venture capital funding for Automerge. They want to make sure that any future growth aligns with the values of local first and doesn't compromise the integrity of the software. Absolutely, it's a delicate balance between growth and preserving the principles of local first. And the idea of local first is gaining momentum, with more developers and companies exploring its potential. It's an exciting time for the movement, and we look forward to seeing how it evolves. For even more great AI dope, click on this next video here. Remember.